Hi everyone, I wanted to share 10 tips that will help you with your productivity. This is geared mainly towards digital artists, but I think a lot of people can use this in their daily lives and for uh, traditional artists as well. Um, and the first one is you should make a to-do list. And I don't mean just a typical, I'm going to do this drawing and then this drawing, but I think you should also put the time of day that you'll work on it. And that sounds a little goofy. But for me, I work better at night or in midday. I never work really well in the morning, so you should put that down. But it is important to try to get sketches um, to be sent in the morning. So sometimes I'll just jot down sketch for this person and then I will say morning. So then I know how to uh, manage my time throughout the day. And it's important for a different reason later on. And when you're writing down the to-do list for your drawings, you should keep your customers in mind and their time zone because sometimes you'll create a drawing and you want to continue the drawing later on, but then they're sleeping. So it's good to keep that in mind. So create your to-do list, write the time of day that you'll get it done. Um, and then if you have some extra time and you can estimate your time very well, go ahead and say that, oh, this will take me 30 minutes and just jot that down. So you have an idea of how much time you're going to spend on a specific part of your drawing. Um, this is very good if you are kind of a busy person. My schedule is a little nuts most of the time. So putting that really helps, helps me to kind of gauge how much time I have for my personal life within a day. Two, show commissions in progress shots. So for example, I usually do a few specific steps when I'm working with someone. I will create a rough draft after being paid. And after the rough draft, which is super rough for the most part, it's usually to get the emotion or the general composition. Um, I'll send that to them. They will approve it. Sometimes, if I feel like that rough draft is a little too rough, I will redo it and make it a little nicer, send it again, and after they basically approve that initial draft, I will go into the lining phase. I will send it back to them. They will approve it. I will go into the base coloring, which is just the flats, pretty much. They'll approve it, and after that, I go ahead and finish the drawing. So those are the essential steps that I do. Um, and I think it's important to show those steps as you work on them because when someone says, hey, are you almost done with my drawing yet? You can still show them that, oh, this is what I did do, that last shot I sent you and I haven't worked on it since, but I am working on it. Instead of having to say, oh no, I didn't work on it at all. So what I typically do is get a lot of my sketches done, at least get that initial phase, and then start doing the lining because once I get into lining and coloring, I generally finish my commissions pretty fast. Communicate with your watchers is what I have for number three. The reason why I wrote that is, first off, you should always get to know your watchers, or I guess you could say your buyers, if they are purchasing a drawing from you or an art piece. And I think it's very motivational because when someone's communicating to you and you start to build that relationship, you really want them to be happy. You want to work with the same people. Um, so I think it's very important for you just to communicate with them. For me, it really gets me motivated to finish your drawing um, if they are someone that does talk to me often. But there's a difference between, hey, you need to finish my drawing. You need to finish it. You need to finish it. There's a difference between that versus, hey, how's it going with my drawing? How are you doing? You know, you're actually talking to the person rather than they're, they're just trying to find out, oh, are you done with my drawing yet? So I really like those buyers and I really appreciate them. And if you're watching it now, thank you so much for understanding that I have a personal life and I'm trying to juggle everything at the same time and you're not my only customer, but I really appreciate you. Um, so yeah, just communicate with your watchers and um, it'll be a lot easier to get things done and not feel under pressure as well. Four, set your shortcuts. So I always emphasize this in my coloring lessons that I offer. The reason why is if you set your shortcuts, you know your software very well in that way because you've customized it and you become a lot faster. Um, before I ever did so, I feel like it was very slow to go ahead and go back to the brush tool, go back to the pencil tool. Now I can just click a key and it's right there. I usually have my hand on a keyboard. I have a Bluetooth keyboard that I work on with my tablet and I'm just loop, 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 just working super fast and it really helps me out. I think it would help out others too if they set those. Five, set time aside just to communicate with your buyers or to check out tutorials and be inspired. What I mean by this is 
even though I do this and I should take my own advice, <laughs> maybe set some time aside for about half an hour. And I do do this um, with a cup of tea. And then I actually just respond to emails and notes and messages and all that good stuff on all my social media sites um, just for that good half an hour. If I am pretty much caught up and I don't have much to respond back to. What I try to do is actually look at Pinterest and other different sites like tutorial folders that I actually have saved up and never get a chance to look at. I like to look at that um, within that half an hour time frame that I gave myself to communicate with my watchers or to better myself. So that's just kind of nice because it's almost like personal time. You're increasing your productivity because you're getting things out of the way. And also, if you finish all of that, you're almost treating yourself. And I think it's really great because it's really nice to have a clean inbox for the most part, at least. Six, always have inspiration. Um, this means, well, I guess for me, when I'm working on a commission and I, and I really don't feel engaged with it, what I try to do is look for new styles that might interest me and I might want to try to adapt my style to that. I, I really like to change my style. I think a lot of people have noticed that in my gallery. I like to challenge myself. Um, I like to look at different color palettes, different kinds of painting, different kinds of cell shading, um, how varying your line art can give it a certain look. I like to look at that stuff by looking at other people's artwork or tutorials they have made. And that really inspires me to work hard on my new one or experiment on it. I do want to say before you experiment on a commission, it is good to know your watchers um, because sometimes they might not like that. They might want you to do the exact same style that they asked for and you delivering something else is not giving them their expectations of you. So I would communicate with them beforehand and say, hey, I like to experiment or maybe they already know that and you might get something different. Is that okay with you? I promise it will be of good quality that you would like. I'm not going to deliver something that you won't like. So you can use your inspirations and still have fun with the commission, even if you are not fully interested in it. And sometimes that honestly does happen. Um, and that's okay, but that's one way to keep yourself inspired. Seven, get to know your software. So this kind of goes with the shortcuts, but your software can be very different from one another. For example, I use Photoshop. I use Paint Tool Sci. I still have um, Clip Studio Paint. And for recording, when I do record, it's kind of tough right now because of my schedule. I have Snagit. Um, I like to get to know my tools or software, I guess you could say, because it increases how fast I work. So for example, I use Sai. Um, well, I, I used to use ta uh, Sai. Sorry, I'm talking all crazy. I used to use Sai to create line art, but now I have discovered vector lines beautiful, <laughs> in Clip Studio Paint, and I use that, and it's very easy to erase um, when lines cross over, so I would just go through here with my eraser, and all of a sudden these two go away when you were talking about lines, and I've shown that in my videos before, so I really like that for line art. I like to use Psy, though, when I don't really want that vector appearance. Um, I just want it to be like almost like an airbrush line. I use Psy. Um, Photoshop I never use for lines. I used to, but now I just use Photoshop for my effects. I like to color in Psy, and I like to use Clip Studio Paint just specifically for those lines. So that's how I got to know my software and what I like to use it for. And because of that, I'm quick to go through a commission from the beginning to the end um, just because I know at this step, so for example, the sketch step or the lining step, I will use this program. At the coloring step or at the finalizing step, I will use Photoshop, so I'm ready to go. So that really helps, even if it's just a few seconds of time. Um, eight, share your files via Dropbox or Google Drive or DeviantArt Stash. There are other websites and all that fun stuff and attachments via emails you can do as well. But I think that's important um, to at least organize whatever folders you do make using these sites. Because let's just say there was a miscommunication about something or you don't know where all your references are because your computer is just complete madness like mine is, you can still go to these folders and check them at any time. Just label it with the commissioner's name or the name of the character. Um, I like to label it with the commissioner's name. It's a lot easier to find. And that way you can 
reference back um, to any of the drawings that they have sent you or their own little, what do you call them, reference sheets. You can find that. You can find your lines that you did. So if your computer crashed, which has happened to me, you can go back and find those lines, even if it's a compressed small file, you can expand it and quickly just trace over it and get all your information that you had before. And that's why I think it's also important to go through progress steps as well. And you usually would have, here's the references. Here's a folder, first off, here's a folder. Um, within that folder, you can have your references. After that, you can have the rough lines, and then you can have your line art and the flats. And generally after the flats, you would have the finalized ones. So here is the entire folder um, for your commission. And when someone finally downloads it, first off, tell them, let me know when you download it um, so I can erase it. Once they download it, it's off you now. You can remove that if you'd like, unless you want to use it for your portfolio. So I emphasize how important it is to download the commission. I do not save commissions for a very long time just because I have so many. Um, but that way it gives the customer a little bit of responsibility as well to do their part and then for you to be able to have more space to save more information for other customers. Nine, star or flag important notes or emails for easy reference. The reason why I mention this is because sometimes emails can be a little chaotic, especially for me because I probably receive, oh, oh gosh, <laughs> I don't even know. I just receive so many a day for my personal life. Um, for the education aspect of myself and then my drawing aspect and then I do reviews and stuff for items and that's another aspect and the they all all these people in these aspects send me these emails and I need to be organized otherwise I'm overwhelmed and it's messy and I'm going to miss somebody's email so I usually flag the ones I don't answer right away or that I need a little bit more time to think about before I respond or via notes I will categorize them into folders and star them so I think that's really important to do just to organize yourself, not just folders, but also your communication methods. Um, 10, this is the final one um, just for today. Make sure to communicate the best method of contact with your buyers. This is really important to me. Not everybody checks their notes on DeviantArt. Not everybody checks their email. Sometimes people use Facebook more. Sometimes people use Twitter more. Um, I have gotten to the point where I'm okay with communicating with my watchers um, by giving them my, my phone number if they're purchasing something from me. Because if for some reason, last minute, they're like, oh no, I don't want them to draw that character. Oh, I want her to have this blue bow or whatever the change of the commission is. They can contact me right away. So before I go ahead and spend some time working on that, I can just go ahead and change it. Which is kind of nice because just a, just creating... A person in one outfit and then all of a sudden the commissioner changes their answer or not their answer what they would like um, and you let's say you finish it that was maybe 10 minutes of your time designing this outfit especially if it's complex or even more um, so having that instant communication is really nice and that really helps me out and I think it would help out a lot of other people too so in general these are just 10 tips to help your productivity um, I plan on making more videos in the future I just don't know how often I can do it Maybe I can reopen my Patreon. I don't even know how to say it right. Is that right? Um, maybe I can reopen that and people can support me in doing so. So maybe you guys can keep an eye out for that. Um, otherwise, if you have ideas on what I should make a video about, go ahead and write down in the comments. I'm starting to get my YouTube channel up again. I've just been a little busy, but I realize it's a lot easier than writing those tutorials out that were extensively long. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching, and I hope this helps you out. Bye!